Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Live Market Analysis Macro Style. That means anything from around the world is a fair game, indices, commodities, foreign exchange, and crypto. My name is Carl Kepling. I'm the market analyst over here at Think Markets, and it's a pleasure to be with you once again. Of course, I wish we had, uh, well, it depends if you're long or short, isn't it? Wish we, I was about to say, wish we had happier times. Now, my positions tend to be more skewed to the long side, so not that happy at the moment. I'm sure we'll get into that in a second. Uh, just the housekeeping stuff on the Q&A window somewhere in your Zoom platform there, or if you're watching me on any of the streaming services via Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, or LinkedIn, um, you have a Q&A panel there as well, and I do see them. Let me make sure I've clicked on that. Uh, in the meantime, let us head over to the Amy Broker screen, first and foremost, and we'll be... Uh, bumping around a, a number of different platforms today, I can assure you, because in my experience, it is near on impossible to get all the data you want from all the markets around the world in the one platform and have that platform do exactly what you want it to do. And if you know of one, certainly let me know. Uh, but this is the one I happen to be using at the moment, and it's the easiest for me to draw on, which is the main part of what we're doing here. Uh, we're going to start with lithium carbonate today and it's a it's a it's a commodity that we watch very very closely because we have so many uh, lithium companies listed here on the ASX if you're watching me um, overseas no doubt you've been following those as well they've done really well up until about the last sort of you know three months or so and then they have been having a bit of a tough time and this explains why they're having a tough time so you can see sorry Khan that oh, changes my <laughs> I thought Khan was chipping in there maybe with some comment, comments about lithium carbonate. We can see back here, and I'm going to find the date, the exact date that occurred. Uh, well, it's either that day or that day. It's 28th of the 12th, let's call it, 2022, where we had enough uh, contraction in the long-term trend for it to flash orange and say, look, something's not right. And before that, in fact, if you look at the short-term trend, uh, you go back to the 1st of December last year to say the short-term trend wasn't right. Um, it crossed officially to a short-term downtrend in mid-December, and then the, the long-term trend started to change from there. And once we cracked beneath the long-term trend, we failed to um, cross above it. That officially ends the long-term uptrend and turns it into a long-term downtrend. Um, so really, you had plenty of warning here. Uh, look at that's February, start of February, that something was very wrong with lithium. And it was from that point that uh, in my other sessions I do on Tuesdays, where we look at stocks, uh, we were starting to trim some of our exposure there. Uh, the short-term trend is very much still in place. So looking at looking at the reverse of that, uh, what would we need to see to say that lithium prices are turning around? Uh, well, we need to see the contraction in the, the rate of decline of the uh, price of lithium carbonate. So the reason why this uh, trend ribbon here is actually getting uh, wider is because we're seeing acceleration. Uh, when the price, or if the price starts to flatten out, it'll start to uh, make those uh, make that ribbon converge, and then it may well go orange, and we'll start to get the other um, uh, indications back the other way. But until then, I can't see anything. This is the the you know the moral of the story here. There's nothing in this chart which suggests to me we're going to see a reversal in the price anytime soon. We have crashed through the point of supply. So that's the trends. The long-term trend is down. Um, looking at areas of demand or supply from the past, we can see there was an area of consolidation here where the market um, felt that that was fair value. It hasn't been the case this time. We've sliced straight through it. And the next level is down to 85,000. So uh, I don't have any good news here for the lithium bulls. And let's head over to lithium hydroxide, the other key uh, lithium mineral there, maybe a little bit of a flattening out here, but it's done that in the past and then um, you know just dropped again. Uh, the key level there, I was going to say is 37, but I reckon that uh, my data provider here has changed the uh, contract over and that, therefore that has changed. So if I drag that down, it's probably still relevant um, because we're, we're working off the new contract now. So I think we're, we're still relevant there. Um, that's going to come down. So there you go. That's uh, That could be in the high 20s, uh, which is not much fun either. So nothing, again, there suggesting that um, that trend is about to change. Uh, I know that uh, we will, I was just about to say it, I know it's very popular, and I do have the question confirmed up there from Colin on copper. I was, I was going to head here next anyway, uh, Colin, but I knew somebody would be asking the question. Uh, let's head over here to the candlesticks. This is one we were getting bullish on not that long ago. 
Uh, in fact, we were looking to add a third. So around about here, this candle, I think we might have looked at it in session. And on that day, I said, look, I don't mind it. It's, it's a bit cheeky. It's a bit speculative. And that's exactly why we're only going to put one third uh, of our risk or our intended risk on the trade. So let's say uh, we would normally risk, and this is purely hypothetical, $1,000 on a trade. You know, you're going to risk whatever you're going to risk. So hypothetical 1000 Well, we'd only risk $333.33 on the trade at that point. But what we were hoping for is that the price action would continue to uh, rally. We were watching this little point in here uh, and that we'd get the high peaks and high troughs come back in. Um, if we were to see, and I know it's all hypothetical, but if we were to see the right candles come in in the light green zone, that's when we would look to add another third and then um, on a close above maybe that point of supply there, maybe that's where the final third. So um, we've seen that the price action is doing the right things to turn the, head, the, the trade around. And I nearly said the words head and, inverted head and shoulders there, which is uh, what essentially that pattern will look like. Uh, it didn't actually happen, unfortunately. And whilst we started to again look pretty good down here, and it might have, might have even all been here. <laughs> no, it was, was it that was it that recent? Anyway, you get you get my drift of what we wanted to see. We haven't seen it, unfortunately. In fact, what we did get, and that's why I think it was, is we ended up with this candle here, didn't we? This nasty, nasty one here. Uh, we got that instead. Uh, that's probably not enough necessarily to back out of the trade, but I'm going to put to you, and again, you know, this is all general advice, you do what you have to do, but I'm going to put to you that that candle there is the one that does cause you to back out of the trade and say, look, this hasn't really worked out for me. And I reckon, oh, I'd love for somebody to tell me what day it was, uh, but I reckon it was all of this stuff is over here now. So I reckon that's when we looked at it and we didn't quite get what we wanted, did we? So unfortunately, uh, probably tagged on that one. By tagged, I mean it's a losing trade. Bit of uh, trader jargon there. And yeah, I don't think it would have been a huge loss though if you're proactive with the position. Um, if you're going to continue to hold on, because I'm not here every uh, Thursday, of course, to, and it's not we're not we don't necessarily discuss it every Thursday. Um, there are, they are your signals there. The combination of those two candles uh, would cause you to go minus one third. Uh, and look, there are other candles there. I think this this candle here, and again this is now education. It's nothing to do with this trade. But if you see that sort of candle at what should be a support zone, that's the um, light green ribbon, and then followed by this next candle, again. Uh, where there should be demand in the system. That's what the first candle indicates. So if we go candle one and candle two, candle one is all about demand. It's all about um, we are pulling back in a fledgling uptrend. That's That can happen. But we um, the next day we have, uh, we have taken out the demand at the bottom of that shadow. Uh, and therefore, that is another minus one third there. And I wouldn't suggest that it's a short because I don't think the trends were setting up for a short, but um, minus one third, minus one third. And then uh, there are many candles from there. That's a minus third. Uh, that is a minus third. Uh, that is most definitely a minus third. Uh, that is a minus third because you can see the big drop and the lack of rally. And uh, this, I'm guessing, may, may well be a live candle. But if it was to close as bad as it looks, that would be a minus third. Um, so I think the market gave you plenty of instruction on what to do after the um, the, the entry there. Okay, uh, it's not not much fun when you have a trade that um, doesn't go your way, but it is one of the hundreds, maybe thousands of trades you're going to do between the day and between today and the day you stop trading. So if you're going to fixate on every trade, um, it, it's going to be really difficult for you. So just put that into perspective. Uh, if you do 100 trades a year and you trade for the next 10 years, that's 1,000 trades. Um, if you get caught up on this trade here, and let's say this is trade three in that 1,000 trade sample, or in a few trades time, you get caught up on trade eight, it's going to be really difficult for you. You've got to say, I've got 1,000 trades. This was trade three of those 1,000. didn't work out for me. I need to get on with it. Okay. Uh, and the goal at the end of that large sample of trades is to be profitable. And you will be. I totally believe you will be if you can follow these things that I teach you in these sessions. Okay, let's go to Bitcoin. Uh, and Ellie's uh, putting another another uh, dagger in the heart there because Bitcoin, Bitcoin's another one that's upsetting me at the moment. And we're going to head over here and have a look at this one. 
and it was going pretty well. We had a little bit of a flash crash in here. Uh, there was also problems with Ethereum and uh, a number of Ethereum tokens coming out of escrow, which caused a bit of a pullback there, which I think through some algorithms also hurt. We've got um, Gary Gensler making unhelpful comments over at the SEC in the United States uh, and just general saber rattling about regulation around the place. Uh, we had a little bit of a pop-up in US rates. I mean, there's many factors there uh, that could explain it, but at the end of the day, it, it don't matter. Explain it any way you want. The price has occurred, and now you've got to deal with it. Um, I was looking at this last uh, evening, I'm pretty sure it was, and it was looking very good. Uh, I know that my crypto wallet over here was looking amazing. It was fatter than it had ever been in the in my entire experience with crypto and that's saying something um and then you know just as usual scratching my head here and here thinking i probably should just get this all out this time because i know uh, we're going to have some issues here and i know that it feels like we've gone from uh buy the dip to sell the rally after this uh, big black candle and i didn't i went to went to sleep and woke up today very uh, frustrated and annoyed and uh, so here's the uh, supply zone now and the uh, the problem for Bitcoin is until we can really uh, deal with this and deal with this well I do think uh, we, we're going to have some issues and I'm not I don't want to go so far as to say that um, that's it for Bitcoin this year I think maybe that's a little presumptuous but I don't think you can be as bullish as maybe you were just a couple of weeks ago where Really, if you look at all we saw up to that high was was accumulation, was was strength and confidence, uh, you know, culminating in, in that candle there, which is great. I didn't think too much of these, you know, they were neither here nor there, still in trend, nothing to get concerned about. Even this one, um, you know, not awful uh, within the context of the overall trend and still holding above key support zones and then confirmed by this I thought okay well this is the this is the candle uh, you know let's label it let's call it candle uh, candle A that looked like the one and it didn't uh, obviously pan out that way because of the, the all those potential explanations that I talked about before so the problem comes uh, in this candle here which is I don't want to say it's your species ending events because carries with it uh, more severe connotations but it's not good when you see that and especially when you see the next day backed up by this and then the next day backed up by that so those three candles in a row because what you what you need to do and this is where this the species ending event comes into it is you need to you need to think of those candles as a single candle this is called uh, candle blending and this explains why you'll often hear me say, well, there are only actually two candles that matter, that there are a bunch of other ones that, are, that all can be blended into, into two types of candles. Um, one of the candle has a long uh, shadow on it, and the other candle is more of a full body. And this one, if you blend them together, you get pretty much a full body candle, which then spans um, a distance in price, which is sufficient to call it a species ending event. And that's why... Um, I fear that as we come back into this zone, uh, we are going to have some issues. And the shadows, I think, and yesterday's candle and this candle, I'm going to guess is live, uh, are starting to demonstrate that. Look, as where where do you take action? And I think um, this is now a key level because this is this becomes just one of my classic um, uh, change of price action trend setups, where we can say that uh, this look given the supply event, I'm going to call this an MPOS. Okay, major point of supply. I'm upgrading that from just a simple point of supply. And then the question mark comes, well, where is the next um, point of supply? And we haven't formed it yet. So this one we're saying is a question mark. And we will know whether that's a, a, an actual point of supply if we get lower highs and lower lows. So don't forget that uh, we say that a peak, uh, which equals a point of supply, uh, equals the highest point uh, between a short-term uptrend and a short-term downtrend. We know that the definition of a, a short-term uptrend equals higher highs and higher lows, and the definition of short-term downtrend equals lower highs.
highs and lower lows. Uh, now, the great thing about having definitions like this is that they're impossible to stuff up. I mean, they are, uh, can you hover over a candle and see what the high is? Of course you can. Uh, can you see what the low is? So there's no way um, everybody listening to me or who will ever listen to me can, can possibly screw this up. And we can see that um, looking at the current bar, uh, the current bar's high is lower than the previous bar's high, and that's fine, but it's the low is not yet lower. So uh, this is currently an inside bar, so it gets ignored. So all we have up to this point is the short-term uptrend on this side, uh, and we're yet to have the short-term downtrend. Uh, but if we take out this bar's low, or we have another candle tomorrow that does the job, uh, then when the short-term downtrend uh, occurs that will then confirm this as a point of supply and remember ladies and gentlemen what we don't want to see is something chugging along wonderfully like this happy happy days and then you know the drill uh, and not just a little pullback it's it's the pullback often that takes out that point of demand and then does this and how many times have you seen this I mean is that a chart that you've seen before and it's probably a chart I feel that might be giving a few people nightmares out there because you're a happy holder all the way up through here uh, and then you probably reluctantly, uh, well, not reluctantly is not the right word, but you belligerently, that's, that's the right word, belligerently refused um, to see the writing on the wall and held uh, all the way down through there. But it is, it is a pattern which occurs time and time again in markets that you must be absolutely wary of. Uh, and, and act upon and there's your pod and if you and what's even worse you get that sharp pullback that uh, species ending move that pushes that pod beneath that pod uh, and then you really then have to be disciplined uh, there's also a point in here uh, and but there's certainly a point here and really all this boils down to ladies and gentlemen is, is just where you do stuff like this and this is this is the end result you do your analysis and it just it's just this okay the analysis gives us these points on where to behave and would act. And there might well be even some other candles that can give us even advance warning uh, happening inside. I know I've stylized these lines, but inside those lines, obviously there are candles. And then it's just a matter of doing what you're supposed to do. I can't make you do it. Nobody can, that's up to you. I'm not sure why that's not doing what I want it to do, but it don't matter, you get what I mean. <laughs> Uh, so that's uh, Bitcoin there for you, Hanelli. Wish I had uh, better news. Uh, look, there's there's some uh, there are some positives in here. Okay, so there are white candles, there are lower shadows, but I'm growing more concerned. Let us head over to gold, which is a little frustrating for me as well because I really wanted this one to go up and, and hit those highs, and yeah, you give you that final big big blow off uh, top uh, to help us there on this trade. And then also really to, to give us that, uh, that, that crowning glory on our, on our stock trades that we might have on the Aussie market. And it, it, it's looking less likely that we're going to see that move, unfortunately. Um, the candles and the price action are setting up, uh, not completely different from, from Bitcoin, uh, but without perhaps the, um, the severity of those uh, black candles. But this, this candle here is, is not good <laughs> and then the uh, the lack of ability really to put pressure on the supply which is so clearly in the market as evidenced by that candle and we're just not we're just not pressuring pressuring that supply with enough demand are we um, or maybe there is a huge amount of demand I can't get the volume uh, from this particular data provider on gold and I, I suspect there isn't anyway because gold's traded all over the place and everywhere it's not a centralized um, you know, one central place that you trade gold. And we can't see necessarily from the volume where the demand is still um, quite quite strong and pushing into supply that is just um, increasing and, and therefore meeting that demand. Or we just don't have a lot of demand and supply is steady anyway. So the volume's not there to tell us. But either way, um, we can see some, some a diminishment of potentially the demand side factors and uh, some pressure coming in there from the supply side factors. Uh, buy, hold, sell. That's where you want me to get to. And I think, look, I'm just going to go hold. I'm going to go hold just because the, the point where we're going to change that thesis is not that far away. 
So if it's a matter of, well, getting out for a, a few a few bucks, and by a few bucks, I mean it's about less than 1%, you know, the 15 to $20 US, then probably just hang in there unless you get an almighty awful candle between now and then, which would uh, give you another uh, a catalyst. Um, so I'm going to go below that, uh, low there's 1969, uh, minus one third. Uh, and in fact, I think you probably want to take maybe uh, an extra third off just for good measure because it's going to turn this trend around and we're probably therefore going to have to come back and, and do some uh, deeper retracements to um, have, an, have a look at that long term trend zone. So disappointing there on gold, I suspect um, disappointing on silver as well. Looking at that chart, it's not as bad as gold. I think um, from these lower shadows, uh, um, I think we're, we're, we're doing better. But you can tell from the sound of my voice, we're not doing great. And let's say, I think same thing, that low there is 2447. And if you're starting to close beneath that, not to just tickle it, but close beneath it, then I think you need to start to back out of uh, this idea that uh, we're going to get more out of gold and silver. Not to say it can't do it, but it's going to take a little bit more time before that's possible. Okay, let's have a look at some... Uh, stock indices here, which is uh, which will be a nice little change up in terms of content, but not in terms of <laughs> positivity, unfortunately. And uh, the request here from uh, Jay is, uh, I don't even know your first initial there, Jay, so I'm going to call you Jay, uh, is one for the NASDAQ. Now, for some reason, my data provider hasn't given me the right candle for the NASDAQ, and I'm a bit annoyed, so uh, Norgate data, pull your socks up on that one. Uh, but what I can do is no doubt, I was going to say, look at the, the NASDAQ 100, which is the actual request, but it won't be in there. I don't think. I'm just trying to find it for you, that's all. Uh, let's go dollar sign N D. Yeah, and even that, even, I was trying to attack it from a different way, and I still don't have the candle. Uh, but let's let's just work on what we have, okay? Which is, uh, for... For your information, that it's another black candle inside the range of that black candle. Uh, so everything on the NASDAQ was fine, to be honest. Uh, a bit like the Bitcoin, a bit like the gold. It's disappointing because it went from looking fine to uh, looking quite decisively not fine. And that's the black candle that I don't like. And then last night's candle, if we could see it, is not a great response at all. And it does indicate that we're likely with uh, the, the, look, you can see the price action has changed now. We've taken out this uh, 11,898. That's not good. And then we've got maybe a little bit of a point here. I'll give you the number in a second. That low there, 11,635. It's looking very, very shaky beneath there. Okay, so um, if you if you had a position specifically on the NASDAQ, and I don't know if you do, maybe you do. It's not hard to do, to, to get one, um, because you would literally go to here. Oh, no, your screen has got blank. It's very frustrating that uh, the technology does this to me, but we'll go back to the Think Markets um, portal then. You can see how we can log into our Think Trader platform and we can see, for example, XAU USD spot gold, definitely tradable with us. Change the U to a G. Uh, we can trade silver. Uh, tra uh, did I, I did talk about copper, so that we'll just literally type in copper and you're going to find that high grade copper. And the other one, obviously Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, in here as well. So it just gives, shows you just how, how simple it is to get exposure to all of these instruments through through the same platform. Uh, but the one here is the NASDAQ 100. And uh, we're getting a bit of an idea of the candle. There you go, this, the candle that's occurring inside the one we can see from the other chart. Uh, so look, if you had a position on that, you'd be looking to light the load. And I'll give you the number again on a close beneath 11,635. Okay, if if you are actually just getting out some now, so I'm actually going to make that even uh, worse. So I think you go minus one third straight away, and then you go minus another third here, and uh, probably even two thirds there. I don't think you want to be long if we're getting beneath that level. Okay, and then just sit out and wait for the next opportunity for this quote-unquote next bull market to begin. Uh, the question here is for the S&P 500, which will give us an idea of why I'm quite bearish at the moment. You can see that second black candle. We couldn't see it on the NASDAQ. It's just so decisive, isn't it, to the downside. I, 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 
want beyond all want for this to head back up and you know the best times to make money is is in a low volatility bull market okay everybody thinks oh you can make a fortune in bear markets bear markets are hard work bear markets prices go down but they go down with high volatility so you get snapbacks you get short covering because everybody knows there's a bull market coming at some stage so nobody wants to stay short forever right but you'll have people that will stay long forever the best time the best place to make money is in a low volatility bull market uh, high volatility bear markets you can make money but it's 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 tricky so yeah i'd love us to, to be in a bull market but I, I think we're on pause for the time being and uh should we look at the dow yeah pretty similar theme there as well two big black candles are not fun i hope it turns around tonight uh, let's bring it back to the a6200 starting to develop our own black candle here yesterday's candle was actually uh, pretty positive uh, at or around that short-term trend zone and really only very sh a very very shallow pullback compared to the run it's had you know overall it looks like it's in a far better position than any of those us indices so we can give ourselves a pat on the back over here uh, but again the, the candles aren't setting up for us to be adding risk today uh, rather just staying back staying out of the market potentially with your individual stock trades to be uh, managing your risk there on a case-by-case -case basis uh, there is a request here also from cr for crude oil uh, so let us head down the list and have a look at that one i might head no, i can stay here i think uh, there it is okay so this was another one again we got tagged on i think we started looking at it quite positively around here okay and then we had some more comments positive comments to say around here and since then it has not gone well uh, now I can't control the candles, neither can you, but you can certainly act upon the act upon the ones you get. So if we're closing beneath that point of demand, that's not a great sign. If you're seeing clusters of black candles together, that's not a great sign. Um, but I think you're you're certainly managing your risk uh, underneath there, and then we even got the price action uh, change as well. So this was all one move, annoying when that occurs, uh, but. Uh, we go through here, here, and then here, and uh, yeah, there's really no reason to still be long on this one. So where does that leave you now? Um, I think even with uh, the severity of that, this black candle, this last black candle, uh, there's no reason again to even be in a position right now at all on the long side. Uh, should we should we go short? I don't think so. I think we're stuck in the middle. I think we're just back in that range. That we've been stuck in for such a long time now so uh, that's past for me well this is all, all a bit morbid and dreary isn't it colin saying if you minus one third on a long is that where you would plus one third on a short uh, no not necessarily colin because you still need all those trends to be in place so it's unlikely uh, that if you've been following a strong strong trend and let's look at a strong trend <laughs> trying to think of one uh, where it changed. I mean, think of some of the ones we've done. So Bitcoin is probably the best example. So let's say we're following a strong trend, right? And we we talked about uh, this idea of um, around here when we saw that big black candle. You know, if you're really jittery, but certainly once you saw the third one, there's really no excuse to to still be holding. You're just looking for places to get out. Uh, we're not we're not necessarily going short here. Okay, at, at, at this at this point is is not a short because the trends are still doing this. Uh, we, we we need to see all the opposites of that. So no, not for me. Uh, well, that's all the the questions I have there. Let me head over to the streamers. Uh, Hugo's here. Hi, Hugo. Neil's here. US dollar going to collapse. We can certainly check that one out. Uh, you could short it. He's saying. Well, let's let's have a look at the US dollar. I'm going to head over to this one and just where i have my us dollar chart uh, probably worth before we head over to the us dollar having a look at the us yields because ultimately it's yields that are moving everything right now this is the price of money uh, we can see the hashtag banking collapse also rear its head and um, so part of the problem here was yields were heading back up on just some you know some really some some bullish data a lot of fed speak the fed just won't let up will they they just they are just intent i feel on uh, crashing this crashing this u.s economy uh, other people have strong words probably against that but i think they're belligerently going to going to um 
do some damage there. So that's why it was heading up, and then, and that's that's hurting stocks, or at least sort of keeping a lid on the, the bullish move we had. And then this is all coming back now to your uh, banking sector, which cracked again. And I have said many, many times, this is the, the chart you need to watch out for. This is the chart where if it's going to go wrong in 2023, it's going to come from here. And lo and behold, it did. Uh, last night's candle, not a great one because we tried to push back up and we failed. We closed uh, certainly closer to the bottom than the top. And whilst this is continuing to be a problem, then it's tough to see anything do well. But it also explains why uh, rates have come back a little bit, which in a perverse way might be helpful in the more medium term, but not the short term. Because in the short term, we're worried about, about hashtag banking crisis sort of stuff. Um, what's that doing to the US dollar? I think it's generally sort of keeping it a bit weak, but you never know with the US dollar because uh, when the, you know, what really hits the fan, that can cause a flight to safety and see it rally anyway. But I'm happy to, to say that the trend should continue uh, to, to move in line with that short term uh, trend ribbon and the long term trend still looks down to me, but I'm not sure it's as much of a lock as you think it is, Neil. I think Neil thinks it's about to collapse. I, I'm not seeing that in the chart. I can certainly see a gentle downtrend but I cannot foresee a collapse based upon the candles that I can see there. If you want to know what the best FX pairs are to trade, actually, we should stay here because let me show you uh, this uh, chart here. That's not where I wanted to go, but uh, I'll show it to you anyway. The New Zealand yields are looking sort of flat to down. Um, I wanted to go here. That's where I wanted to go. Uh, so we're looking at the um, yields in the UK. So actually, look at some of the other ones. You can see they've all pulled back. There's the Aussie, Aussie yields have pulled back. Um, they've pulled back a little bit, but uh, trending a bit higher. So just look at the relative strength here. Then we go to the, the sterling or the, uh, the UK gilts, uh, the Japanese yields. Uh, forget those, they're all over the place. New Zealand yields pulling back a bit and the US yields pulling back a bit. So if you want to um, trade FX, you want to try and find, well, which of those yields are going up the most and which of those yields are going down the most, all right? Because FX loves higher yields and higher relative yields to other um, currencies. So what we saw there is, well, I'd, certainly that one is still trending higher. And the euro up until, and I'm using German so here as a proxy, up until the last couple of candles were trending higher. Uh, and then, you know, the rest of them are pretty flat. So uh, you can go to, I'll bring in the New Zealand one because the New Zealand's probably got the most bearish uh, economic output. But if we have a look at the best trades, there you go, <laughs> you know, and, and that's not rocket science. And I know when, you, when people trade FX, they get caught up on uh, what are the non-farm payrolls are going to be? And I need to do a trade three minutes after that to try and make four pips. This is how you make money trading FX. It's by saying, well, the, the interest rate outlook uh, for, for the Eurozone is for higher yields relative to the New Zealand uh, economy, which we're going to have lower yields, and therefore higher yields, lower yields, this one has to go up. And the other one is uh, still the sterling there also, sterling versus New, the New Zealand dollar. But even um, if you look at some of the crosses against the Aussie as well, so those two particular, we're seeing a lot of euro strength uh, against the Aussie. I wrote an article about this. It's on the website. Okay, It's not like I'm just saying this now. I wrote it a, a, a week, week and a half ago about some of the some of the things going on here. And uh, that's the other one there. So there's, they're still going well. And you might say, oh, that's gone up too much now, I can't trade it. Well, nothing's really changed in that outlook. You're still getting a higher yield or relative higher yield or expected to get a relative higher yield uh, in the Euro and Sterling than you are on uh, the Aussie and the New Zealand. Uh, let's have a look at the FTSE and then uh, we might, uh, that's all the questions covered. Neil saying New Zealand dollar might collapse, certainly is, is looking very, very weak. Uh, I'm going to go ahead to the FTSE, and then we're going to do uh, wheat after that, and then we might finish it there. Uh, so let us go to the FTSE, which is up here, uh, which looks like the Aussie market, maybe a little bit better, but it's a little bit closer to the highs. Look, it's still strong. I, I'm not going to get, uh, you know, uh, too jittery about this one. I know point of supply, point of supply, but it, it's it's still very solid. Uh, so I think you still stay in the course there for the time being on the FTSE. I don't think there's any reason necessarily to manage your risk. And then 
um, let us finish with, uh, with, with wheat today, uh, which is a very clear, if you ask me, uh, short trade. And if I can find it, there it is. Oh, on the wrong screen. There you go. Enough said. Looks pretty awful to me. Um, and you can trade that on the platform uh, by actually just going, typing in wheat. There you go. And you can see it's going to be the same chart. And uh, to then turn that into something else, which is a trade, uh, it's just a matter of going into here. And I like to make this as little as possible. So you can see that the, the, um, the smallest way to play it is by saying, well, each move in the big number, that's uh, the point two or the, or the first decimal, is worth $1.51 Australian to you. And that's just a matter of, well, where do you think it's going to go? Turn on your profit, turn on your loss. And you can um, massage this and say, well, I think it's going to 580. <laughs> you know? um, we need to turn that around, click sell, and it'll change that now. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure why that's not, uh, maybe we've got two in value. Let's go six, uh, let's stop at 666. Um, it's going to come to me. Take profit at, let's just turn it off and turn it on again. There you go. This one has to be lower. Oh, that's all it is. This one has to be lower. There you go. I think it's going to 580 and I need to stop at uh, 666. There you go. That makes sense now. Uh, so, you know, potentially we can make close to 100 bucks a share for risking 40 bucks. Now, I didn't do that very scientifically, obviously. Uh, we would need to go back to the chart and work out some actual numbers. For example, uh, if you were going to trade this one short, you would be putting a stop loss, I think, well, preferably above that high. So this is actually a little bit of a ways away. And this is part, maybe part of the problem. Uh, like we often say, when we're going along, uh, we'd like to see the candle, the right candle at our light green zone. Well, we don't have a light green zone because we're in a downtrend. So we're going short here. Now, it's something we don't talk about enough, is it? Are these short trades? Because we tend to talk about stocks a lot. Okay. Uh, but here with commodities, it's just, it's just long, long or short or interchangeable. So really, I know it's hindsight, but you know, using my methodology, you can see where the trades are coming because we're finding, look at that great reversal here and then the follow through, and there's another one there. These, these are your trades next to the pink zone. So the only thing that might hold me back from saying, hey, I think you know, this wheat's the best trade we've seen today, it's very close to it because the trend is just amazing, um, is we're so far away now from our light pink zone that you know the further away you get, the higher there is, higher chance there is for a reversion back to the mean, and that's the mean. That's that's your you know your your value zone, uh, but I'm not averse to saying well it is looking pretty awful right now, so happy to put some risk on and then take my chances. But yeah, let's think outside the square a little bit, and if you do have an account, an amazing uh, resource like our Think Markets. Um, Think Trader account, then you can do these things. You don't have to be stuck to trading four big resource companies and, and a few banks. Uh, from me, yep. Yep, we've got Megan saying, uh, please talk about what's behind your long-term and short-term trend chart. What indicators do you use? They're just uh, exponential moving averages, Megan. They're quite boring actually, but effective. And I find that they're the best indicators. So I know a lot of, um, a lot of traders will uh, you, I don't know if you can see, you can, you can't see, uh, let's go here, but look at my uh, screen even. Let's say I wanted to put on an indicator like an RSI or a Stochastics or a MACD. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, I can't even put them on. I've taken off all those buttons and, 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 and toolbars to even do that because they're just so useless and so irrelevant. And I know there'll be a few um, analysts out there saying, oh no, Carl, you know, this, this works. I say, oh, good, good for you. Anyway, I find that indicators are a bit useless. I find that what, what works best is the simplest models because it's not all about how you pick the trades, all right? It's about what you do when you're in a trade that matters the most. Uh, but I use these, Megan, and they're, they're no secret. So you can see up here, this is where the, um, the parameters are hiding, the 21 and 34 exponential moving averages. That's my short-term trend ribbon. And then the uh, 144 and 233 exponential moving averages, which are my long-term trend ribbon. And again, if you if you don't have a, a, a methodology, if you don't have a philosophy like the way you do stuff, you got your by 
by you're naturally, uh, by virtue of that, going to just put everything you can on. You're going to go information overload. I don't know what I'm doing, therefore let me put everything on, <laughs> right? If you know what you're doing, you will pare back all that complexity and you will keep it nice and simple because what you need to do first is identify the trend. Identify the trend in two ways, the short-term trend and the long-term trend, and preferably they align. If they don't, doesn't mean you can't trade. It means you need to get some other stuff working for you. And that's price action. I talked about my peaks and my troughs. I talked about my points of demand. I put, talked about my points of supply. Telling you where the key levels are in the market, telling you where demand is coming in, uh, telling you where supply is coming in, telling you where there is an equilibrium. And finally, your final flush is flourish, as I call it, is your Japanese candlesticks to give you your timing tools. Uh, it's, it's generally around the candles that I'm typing a plus one third or a minus one third potentially also that price action. Uh, so my recommendation is to pair it back, keep it nice and simple, and focus more on what you're doing, on how you're getting into, into your trades, uh, your risk management on you getting in and your risk management on getting out. And that's where the real money is made or lost. It's not on, oh, that is the best candlestick pattern ever, or that is the best indicator ever, because there are a lot of people that find the best candlesticks and best uh, indicators and still can't trade because they screw up the risk management side of things. Uh, let's uh, go to John. John saying, given the volatility, is LSF long short fund a good option? Uh, or is this the wrong webinar? It is the wrong webinar for that one, John. Come back on Tuesdays. That's when we talk about stocks. Today, it's all about the macro. Barry saying, super work, great day. Great. I don't know. It's always a great day. We're, we're still alive. We're still kicking. You know, we're still in with a chance to, um, to to make some good trades, I think, Barry. But it's a bit, I'm a bit annoyed. I'm a bit frustrated at the moment. Uh, Michael asking about uranium, of course, that we have. We, we can't finish today's session without discussing uranium because it flinched. <laughs> it, it, it actually moved. There you go. And <laughs> I better not zoom out too much because the more I zoom out, the more you realize it actually didn't move very much. But to be fair, the more you zoom out, the more you sort of see that something pretty neat is building here. So mm -hmm. that's interesting. Uh, let me do that because the other thing you get in technical analysis books, uh, which are a little bit useless in my opinion, uh, trend lines and uh, triangles and things like that. I don't, I don't use them as much. You know that. Uh, but there is one there for the, for the classical technical analysts out there. That is a pretty nice, what we would call that, a pennant or a wedge, probably more of a wedge. Uh, and the, well, the, here's the theory. I mean, the theory is into that you're probably more likely to uh, move in the direction it was heading before that, which is down. I don't think that's the case uh, for this particular scenario because we do have this uptrend here, uh, which would then lead me to draw that arrow instead. Uh, and yeah, look, it's setting up pretty well for a nice move here. Uh, the opposite of that, if you turn that upside down, is this um, downward shaping one, which you can see broke through there. So we've got the opposite of that. And you can see the downward slopes uh, and one there. So we've got the opposite again. Maybe there's an upward sloping one there. So I think uranium looks good. I don't want to say too much about it, though, Michael, because <laughs> I don't want to jinx it. Like, could it finally be the time? And I, I haven't... And I won't do them now, but um, I was going to talk about uranium stocks. I'll do that on Tuesday. But um, Sprott, uh, it would be, yes, yeah, so you can check out that ETF. That would be the way to go. Are they trying to quarter uranium? They've been trying to do it for about three years, haven't they, Michael? So is now the time? Maybe we're getting closer. I don't know. But uh, the chart's looking much better than it was a few weeks ago. Okay, well, I think that might be it today. Um, I think we're I've done all those requests. So... Let us uh, adjourn for the session. Uh, I'm back tomorrow. Don't worry. You can ask me about US shares. You can see there the USA edition on Friday at 12 p.m. Note the slight time difference. Uh, www.thinkmarkets.com forward slash au forward slash webinars. And of course, on Tuesdays, I do the ASX stocks. Um, if you're not a client of Think Markets, well, you really should be because we are the good guys in the Australian broking scene. And hey, if you're not in Australia, if you're listening from overseas, we have offices all over the world. I know we've got one in Chicago, so I'm guessing you can open an account over there. I know we've got one in London, so you can open an account there. Uh, we're in Dubai, we're in the Philippines, we're in Thailand, we're in Vietnam, uh, we're in Singapore, we're in Japan, we're in New Zealand. Khan was just telling me. So uh, there's not many places we aren't. 
where you could uh, you could open an account with us. But head to www.thinkmarkets.com forward slash AU. And up the top, uh, you've got the little uh, country selector as well. Uh, but hey, if you're trading in Australia, where I'm based, we've got $8 flat rate chess sponsored trades. And this is the international stuff here. This is the macro. Uh, you can trade them using our contract for difference platform CFDs. And uh, the great thing about CFDs is that they are commission free and we have the tightest spreads in the business. We're an award winning broker. We, as I said, located all over the world and we're, uh, we're uh, regulated all over the world as well. Okay. Uh, so a safe broker also, world-class trading apps and a dedicated account manager. You can actually call up and talk to us, which is pretty rare these days. If you're watching me on any of the streaming services, please hit the subscribe button to stay notified of any of my future video updates. And it's very important that you also hit the like button to let me know you like what I'm doing so I continue to do more of it. Apart from that, it's been a pleasure chatting with you today. Hopefully you got lots out of it. I had plenty of fun. All the best until we catch up again. Bye-bye. Uh, before you go, don't forget that everything we've talked about today is general in nature, has not taken into account your personal financial circumstances or particular needs. So before taking action on any of these ideas, please consult the help of a financial professional. The rest of the information in, in, that, disclaimer is important. in that disclaimer is important. You should read it. Or if you have any further questions or queries, please uh, head to our website and download our product disclosure statement.